It's time for Washington Fish Side Quest. This episode, it's time for Washington Fun Quest. Hey everybody, welcome to Washington Fun Quest. <laughs> this is my close personal friend Lee. He invited to take me out chanterelle hunting. Honestly, when he said we were going fun guy hunting, since I'm kind of a fun guy and we're going to Capitol Forest, I thought for sure he was hunting me for sport. Figured it's 2020, there's much less cool ways to die, but I guess we're out here for mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, we are. Chantrells for sure. We could find some bolites. We should find some uh, cauliflower mushroom. We could find some chicken of the woods, and we could also find oyster mushroom. Dang, that's awesome. Uh, Lee, you were just telling me what you like about uh, mushroom uh, hunting, foraging. I feel like it takes advantage of our, our built-in instincts of pattern recognition and our hunting and foraging. It's deep inside of what makes us a successful mammal, a <laughs> successful primate. I don't know. We're going to find that after you you get used to seeing them, then you can't not see them. You'll see them all the time. But right now they're invisible to you. And we're going we're gonna to unlock Blake's ability to find mushrooms. Holy smokes. <laughs> I super appreciate it. Well, let's get okay. at it. Sweet. Um, I brought two paper bags because um, mushrooms are... They're really wet and the bags will hopefully um, siphon off some of the water like on our way home. Yeah, that's great. Into the bag. Well, okay. do you want to say anything about the camper? Oh. So is that like a storage bin under there? Yeah, this is where Jessica keeps all her clothes. Oh, cool. It's so dirty right now. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, all my water's under here. Well, just so you know, like I'm mm -hmm. incredibly uh, envious that you a, have it and B, have the skill to put it together. Man, that's, that's awesome. Food. I put really deep drawers in it. Yeah, I haven't... Uh, well, actually, you want to see the coolest thing? Sure. When my old camper was really, really hard to make the bed. Yep. And so my goal for this one was to make the bed as fast as possible. So there's the bed. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. It's all dirty right now, but... Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you see this, uh, this, this seat here swivels around, too? Yeah, I can swivel it. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. So I put a, it's got a really nice furnace in it and it's really well insulated so I can go up to the mountains when it's snowing and hang out and not have to pay for expensive lodging. Yeah, and that's the fridge freezer back there. Yeah. Actually, well, Lee, if I made anything like one quarter this cool, people would never hear the end of it. If, uh, <laughs> well, you can see it's not quite done, but if I was gonna show, if I'm gonna show off a little bit, uh, I got a bunch of dirt in here. I built these big deep drawers. Man. So these are all my, like my camp stuff. Uh, table, chairs. Yeah, chairs. Shower, buck, or, uh, shovel. And this side I keep it pretty open. So I, I mean, I got some stuff in here. I got like some fish and stuff. And I have to still have to put the laminate on here and finish these, but it's getting there. All right. This will be all walled off one day. Man, that's awesome. But uh, when I'm out in the woods, I prefer an orange bucket. Number one, orange is the best thing you can have. I won't lose my bucket. Oh man, I got so many Homer buckets at home. I should, I don't know why I didn't just grab one. It's not, it's not classy, like a basket. Yeah. You know when people walk around with a basket in the woods and they're picking mushrooms? Like that's, I think that's kind of like when you go fly fishing with a tweed hat yeah. on. You know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, out here, it's everything's wet and you're going to fall down a bunch of times with the bucket. And oh, good call. We're going up super steep slopes and it's really rocky and it's raining. Uh, so you won't ruin your mushrooms. So I'm all about oh, it. You see, I made a rookie mistake. I brought this little green bucket that only will blend in to the surroundings. <laughs> but um, I brought it superficially so it seemed like I had more mushrooms, you know, because it's yeah. smaller, smaller space. <laughs> <laughs> and in Washington, when you're hunting, you have to wear orange. There we go. I don't care if you're hunting animals or if you're hunting fungus you gotta take care of yourself and watch out for each other okay. well we're about 15 feet in it is it's all rotten and gross though but ah cool here's what a rotten chanterelle looks like this could be a scaly chanterelle but it smells good yeah looks pretty spongy my strategy takes advantage of the fact that they tend to fruit on the sides of of a trail because then when animals walk by they'll push the spores around and uh, so they, they, they're successful when they're by the trail so what I will do is move on the trail at a pretty normal speed scanning and then when I find one then I know that that's an area where they'll be successful 
and then I'll kind of focus on that area and look uh, look under the slal and under the ferns. Um, but I don't tend to spend a lot of time in one area unless I find one pretty quickly. Uh, so I like to cover a lot of ground. All right, cool beans. It usually works pretty good for me. Yeah, so I actually also find myself to be more successful when I'm going up a steep hill because you can look underneath the ferns. When you're looking down the hill, all you see is the tops of the vegetation, the understory blocks, any view of the under undergrowth. I like this substrate too with the, is that the right word? Substrate? That's not wrong. I like I like this environment too where there's a lot of moss. Uh, not that the moss is good for development of the fruiting bodies necessarily, but it makes it easier to see them because there, you can be in an area where there's a ton of mushrooms, but if you can't see them, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, it's a beautiful liquid sunshine day up here on Capitol Forest. Yeah. Whenever it rains, I always wear this sweatshirt because you know what they say about wet weather, cotton is king. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well here's a, this is a scaly chanterelle. Um, this is a baby one. They'll get really, really big. We'll see more later today. Some people consider these edible. Uh, I haven't attempted it because they're not apparently that delicious, so it's not worth the risk for me. Ah, oh, yes. Um, but you can tell that it's not a regular chanterelle because it's cupped at the top. It's got more of an orange color. Does it have the lines on the bottom? It does. This one's really, okay. this is a juvenile, I don't know if that's the right word. This is a baby, so it hasn't fully developed. We'll see some that are really developed. And there's another one right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going off trail here a bit, up a game trail. Just to it see if there's... Just a remnant from when they log. They drag a log over the ground. Right in front of that log. Right in front of that log, eh? We'll see if I can also see it. I have to fall as I go. Oh yeah, I do see it. Well, there's a couple there. There's one up there. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna, those look like those are scalies again. So we're not gonna eat those, but they're they're nice looking. We're finding stuff though. That's uh, better than sitting at home on the couch. Uh, this is this is not native to the area. It actually came from uh, St. Louis, I believe. But these are an invasive species that we'll see a lot of. Ah. It's called the Bud Light can. Ooh. Yeah, um, there's I'll, a. I'll pick this up. I'm not gonna eat it. For whatever reason, the genus <laughs> Anheuserus bushus is the most, <laughs> most common of the can variety you find on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's out. Of, I don't know why it's out of the ground. I don't know what happened to it, but huh. um, you can clearly see the difference in color. So we'll just we'll just let's just take let's talk about it. This is actually this is good that we found a big floppy gross. Oh, that's one. a huge one. Yeah. So in my uh, so in my mind, uh, <laughs> up to my standards, this is not a keeper. Spawned uh, out. It's not a keeper because number one, it's like super big and floppy, but number two, if it's been picked already, typically like yeah. Yeah, I just leave it. I usually don't harvest. Ripped um, out of the root too. Yeah. I don't harvest mushrooms that have been picked. But uh, let me show you some stuff. So a chanterelle will will definitely have, and this one's really started to decompose. We won't have gills. There won't be a a distinct transition between the cap and the stem it will come up and it'll it'll flare and it'll have these veins these aren't these aren't gills like a mushroom you get at the store um, they're you know they're a little messed up but you can see it yeah um, yeah and then it will have an irregular shape too they will sometimes be round but they will typically trend away from round as they get bigger so frilly like a I don't know like a frilly thing that a person would wear <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but here's a real thing that you want to pay attention to. If you're like, I don't know if this is a chanterelle or not. Well, if you pick it up and then you squeeze it and it crumbles like into bits, like you're crumbling a cake, not a chanterelle for sure. Oh, okay. So if I grab this and I peel it apart, it's going to peel apart like string cheese. See that? Oh. That's a really good indicator, no, the, the, the string cheese. So if you pick up a russula or something or and you you know you throw it on the ground, it just goes, <laughs> breaks into a bunch of little pieces. So you want that and then... You know, this is a real classic chanterelle shape, kind of cupped out a little bit. Oh, cool. Um, so if you want to, want to like try that. I gotta say, Lee, I've watched a few of these videos, you know, just to prep for this, and this is the first uh, string cheese method uh, I've seen. <laughs> so cool, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can tell it's kind of losing like its woody chanterelle, yeah. you know, as it kind of rots, it becomes more spongy. But yeah, that's really really cool about the texture. That's 
it's like a soft wood, you know, it's mm -hmm. wild. It's not crispy. Yeah. So that I'd probably, I would probably just scatter those pieces, uh -huh. you know, throughout. Honestly, I have no idea if this is even true, but since I believe there's still spores coming out of here, let's just going to huck them. Yeah, let's just going to try to reseed. All right. That's the luckiest day that that mushroom will ever have. Yeah. It's all of its. And again, we have no idea why that one was uh, yanked out of the ground. Yeah, but I bet it was uh, likely probably a Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah. But we could have been up here. So we found one. And I see some more. Oh, I see like a shitload actually. Uh, so I'm just gonna let you look around. Oh <laughs> I man. I saw like 10 of them. Oh boy. Um, so there's some in that direction and there's some in that direction. So we're, we're in it. This is what I was hoping for. Okay. So I'm gonna film you a little bit. Oh boy. Well, my bucket's full of uh, old cans now. That's okay. <laughs> Let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find some. All, All right. right. So uh, to Lee's point at the beginning, I don't. Oh, there is some seeing. I was gonna say I was completely <laughs> blind at first, but now I'm now I am starting to pick them up as I chill out and look a little closer to the ground. And as you said, looking up, I see some down there, but the ones up here are much easier to spot because you can really see that kind of orange goldy chantrelli. Uh, color pop among the slough, you know, among the forest floor. So, uh. Ah, look at that. I mean, yeah. I think these look kind of old, right? Yeah, well, let's take a look at them. Actually, they look a lot, they look better than the other one, but... Okay. Um, I wouldn't say those are... Whoop. Yeah, they're a little floppy. But I can see there's more. Floppy. As I look around, like even just by my foot, I can see more. And so these are... Oh, yeah? You know, yeah. this one, let's see here. These are about three feet away, and I didn't even see them. Yeah, trained eye like Lee. Uh, there we go. There's like a whole set. So this is like uh, a little annoying getting these out of here. These are a little older. These aren't These aren't the best. They're starting to kind of, they're okay. They're, they're, they're keepers. Um, you can pull them out of the ground, or you can cut them. Uh, I, you know, there's people talk about like, if you're damaging the mycelium, but I, don't, I actually don't think you can. But that could be, you know, leave that in the comments. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing is, um, you gotta get them clean. So I have a mushroom right here with a brush on the back of it. So I just kind of brush off uh, any of the detritus that is on the mushroom. That is a sweet knife. Uh, get, just get rid of any of this garbage. You don't want that in your bucket. And then uh, I usually cut the end of it flush and then like so it's nice and square at the bottom. This is a little this is a little wet, but um, let's keep it because it's not garbage. Yeah, all right. And once it's pretty clean, then I'll throw it in the bucket. So same thing with this one. This is like a borderline, but it's a keeper because we haven't found anything else yet. End of the day, maybe not. So there we go, put them in my bucket. And then I usually put the lid back on. Oh, good call. Uh, because if I don't put the lid back on, uh, I'm gonna trip and like fall over or something or like dirt will fall in. And then, uh, typically, if you put your, if you hold, if you keep your mushroom knife, if you keep your mushroom knife out and in your hand and ready to go, um, you won't find any mushrooms. So just put it away. <laughs> and as soon as you put it away, then you'll find another set. That's pretty much how that works. So this is a perfect example of my strategy of just cruising on the trail at kind of relative speed and then this kind of pops out into your vision the color pops out and, oh yeah you know that's not a that's not a beauty but the fact that it's here means that this area is habitable uh, or it's successful for chanchelle so i just look around and lo and behold oh, yep. four feet away so there's that there's like and there's these guys here if i can just get them on film those look actually those look pretty good right there you can see the top of them oh that's yeah kind of the, the texture yep those look um, great there's probably like a little cave here It'll just splinter it. So I, a lot of times I do a little bit of hedge trimming. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Probably shouldn't have brought the full thing. I got my I've got a got a good good cut there. Woo! That is a beautiful. Yeah, that's, this is my new personal best chanterelle. Yeah, from a in from, my top three for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would say from a culinary aspect, that that right there, that is perfect. It's the perfect size and the perfect shape. If you section that thing in half, or if you cut slices out of it, you'll get the, the classic shape. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, these are so nice looking, I'm just gonna probably freeze them in carbonite, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> You're gonna gild them and... <laughs> Bronze them, yep. So, in this, uh, in this situation, because just because of the way everything is, I'm gonna cut these, and then I'm gonna pick them out like that. Nice. And this came out pretty clean, so 
This is a little tighter on the bottom. It's not so loose. Still, like, it's a little old. I don't really know if it's a moisture or growth. I don't know why that happens, but... Oh, yeah. It's like, you had to pull all this stuff out of there. That's a good one, though. That's, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Not, that's a keeper. We'll give that one. We'll put this one in the green bucket. Just visually, and the sound it makes when you brush it, you can tell it's way drier. Yeah, so that's a good keeper. Also, not so bad. Not yeah, it looks, so bad. looks good to me. So for me, from a culinary standpoint, uh, this is a really good size. Um, it's not big and floppy. It's not tiny. When they're too tiny, you just feel guilty, like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have picked that that early. It's going to grow to be a bigger mushroom. Uh, but, you know, it's a really good size. I like that. It's still kind of, it's probably a little crunchy when we cook it. So, I think that uh, we can leave our buckets and maybe cruise around, like, within a probably 20 yard radius. Okay. I, this is me personally, usually I'll find a spot like this, I'll put my bucket in the middle of it, and then I'll walk around, and I'll fill my hat up with mushrooms, <laughs> and then I go back and dump my hat in the bucket. Oh, I should have brought my hat, no I wonder I'm not doing so good. Because I don't like, uh, I don't like carrying the bucket around if I don't have to. Cool. Yeah, yeah so I, I have this little trick sometimes, I sweep my leg, I learned it from, uh, Cobra Kai, <laughs> actually, <laughs> so, I, actually, I guess I learned it from, yeah, it was from Johnny, he was the one that did it, sweep, sweep. so you come through, you see all this little walls, sometimes you'll just go for a sweep like this, oh, look at that, whoa, these, uh, don't eat these raw, always cook them, you won't die, and you won't get extra big or extra small or anything, but you will get a stomach <laughs> ache, and, um, nobody wants a stomach ache, yeah, we're on it, we're on it, There's a nice little bunch right here. These are super clean ones over here. Look at these. Whoa, yeah, those are buttes. Holy smokes. Man, look how beautiful this, uh, this creek is here. Look at that. Wow. Huge thanks to Lee for taking me out and showing me what's what. I, there's the haul for the day. I think I might have found maybe uh, two of those. <laughs> Lee found the rest. All right. Thanks so much again, Lee. You know, before we uh, depart here, do you have any uh, closing tips for the aspiring mushroom forager slash hunter? Yeah, I do. Uh, a lot of times when you come out here and you pick a mushroom and you're just really unsure, like, is, is this the one I should be picking? And then you look in the book or maybe you check the internet and it's not, it's not, not really enough. Sometimes you just need some hands-on. So if you're looking to find chanterelles, I think the smartest thing you can do is just go to the store, go to the farmer's market, um, or maybe you just uh, get with a friend that has some chanterelles and get some, take them home, cut them apart, cook them, eat them, smell them, maybe one or two times, and just kind of get used to what they feel like, what they, what they look like. And then when you're out in the woods and you pick one, you've already got that experience and that built-in pattern recognition. And right away, it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out, and then you can use the book after that. And another good thing is to get to know your trees because the trees and the mushrooms live together. And if you don't know what trees you're under, you don't know if you're going to see the mushrooms or not. Well, fine advice. I know my mushroom expertise has increased exponentially during <laughs> this trip from like nothing to something. Yeah. <laughs> so I super appreciate it and I look forward to getting out here some more. See you next time, perhaps, on Washington Fungi Quest. <laughs>